So we've just introduced the idea of partial fraction decomposition and how to deal with decomposing a fraction that has a denominator which can be factored into linear factors that are different from each other. Now we're going to see what happens when that's not the case, when we actually have a repeated linear factor in the denominator. I'm going to do it by making a mistake. So let's start off. We're going to perform partial fraction decomposition on this function using what we know already. We're going to show that it won't work. So let's look at this first. We've got 1 on x squared plus 2x plus 1. Now, I just happen to know, but you could figure this out by factorising it yourself, that that denominator is actually 1 over x plus 1 all squared. And that's great because that's a linear factor. x plus 1 is a linear function. Unfortunately, though, it's squared, so it's actually repeated. It's like 1 over x plus 1 and then x plus 1 again. So it's the same thing repeated. And that sort of breaks the rules of what we were talking about in the previous video. But let's pretend it doesn't and try to do it as if we were going to use the same method. So I'm going to say that that should be equal to a over x plus 1 plus, well, the other linear factor is the same thing, b over x plus 1. So let's see what happens then. So we've got 1 over x squared plus 2x plus 1. And that's going to be equal to a times x plus 1 plus b times x plus 1 all over x plus 1 all squared, the common denominator. And that's all fine. I can cancel that with that because they're the same thing. And I'm left with 1 equals, let's expand it out and save a bit of space, ax plus a plus bx plus b. Okay, so that means equating coefficients, we should have 1 equal to a plus b and 0 equals to ax plus bx a plus b. Oh, that's weird. That doesn't work because I've said a plus b equals equal to 1, a plus b is equal to 0. I can't possibly have the same thing equal to two different numbers. It won't work. So in other words, these two equations are inconsistent with each other. They point to a contradiction. And the whole point there is that actually the original thing we did where we tried to combine our fractions in this way, that was incorrect. We we're trying to use the method for distinct linear factors. So this method doesn't work when we have repeated linear factors. So we're going to have to look for a new way, a new method. Well, here it is. Basically, everything you see there is the same as what we looked at in the last video, except for the red bit, step number three. So we factorise the denominator. We form new fractions, each with a denominator made from one of the factors and a numerator that's a determined, undetermined constant. But whenever we have a factor that is repeated, in other words, raised to a power, we need to form a new fraction for each power of the factor up to the required power. So, for example, in the last one where we had 1 over x plus 1 all squared, we need to have a 1 over x plus 1, sorry, an a over x plus 1, and then a b over x plus 1 all squared. It's slightly different because we've got the x plus 1 squared taken care of. And that'll get around the inconsistency problem that we had when we did that example. Everything from then on, 4, 5, 6, is all the same stuff. So it's rearranging, equating powers, or sorry, equating coefficients of powers of x and determining those constants. So let's try it out with this one. Maybe if you want to try out another one later, you could go back and redo the first example we did and check how to get that one right. But for now, let's decompose this one. Now this, we've already done step one here because the factorization has been done. So what we can say is we've got 1 over x, that's linear, x plus 3 is linear, but it's repeated. So we're going to have a over x, constant b over x plus 3, and then another one to take care of the fact that we've got a power there, so x plus 3, all squared. So we need to recombine to get over a common denominator. The left hand side stays the same. a is already over x, but we need to put it over x plus 3 as well. x plus 3 squared, sorry. So we multiply it. We're going to have x, x plus 3 all squared as our denominator b is already over x plus 3, but it needs another one to be squared, and it also needs an x. So we need bx, x plus 3, 
And finally, c is already over x plus 3 squared, but it's not over x, so we need a cx. Now, same denominators, so they can cancel. And then we need to expand things out. So we've got 1 equal to ax squared plus 6ax plus 9, then plus bx squared plus 3bx and plus cx. And now we've dealt with our issue of our repeated factor and we can just go now to just equating those coefficients. So that was, that's what we'll do on the next slide. So just re-copying that piece from the previous page, then equating coefficients. On the left we've got no x squareds, so that's a 0. On the right we've got an a and a b, so it's a plus b. x to the 1, again we've got none of those on the left. On the right though we have 6a and plus 3b and plus a c as well. And finally x to the 0, or constant terms, we've got a 1 on the left, we've got 9, that should be an a, 9a, and no other constants. So, I'm going to call those 3, 2, and 1. Equation 3 straight away tells us that a is 1 on 9. We can use that in equation 2, uh, sorry, in equation 1. We get 0 is equal to 1 on 9 plus b. So b is minus 1 on 9. And then we can go over and use both those values in equation 2 to figure out what c is. So we have 0 is 6 by a plus 3 by b plus c. And we put in the values for a and b there. And then we have 0 is 6 on 9 minus 3 on 9 plus c. So c is going to be equal to minus 3 on 9 or just minus 1 third if we cancel that down. So we've got our a, b and c values and we can slot them back into this fraction here. So just replacing a, b and c there. Remember that a is 1 on 9, so we're going to have 1 on 9x. b is minus 1 on 9, so it's minus 1 on 9x plus 3. And c is minus 1 on 3. So there's our partial fraction decomposition with a repeated linear factor. And you can go back and check that one if you like, just by multiplying everything out and seeing if you get the right result for the left-hand side. But just remember when you have a repeated linear factor, you always need to make sure that you count, account for all of the powers of that linear factor in your original decomposition. So let's see again, why did we do that? Well remember it's to try to integrate things that we can't figure out how to integrate otherwise. Fractions or rational functions like this. So here we're going to integrate that function we've just decomposed. So we have the integral of 1 on x, x plus 3 all squared, dx. Okay, and that's going to be equal to the integral of this function. And so there we have 1 on 9 times log of x, not plus, minus 1 on 9, log of x plus 3. And then we're going to have to do a little substitution here. So we've got minus a third, the integral of x plus 3 to the minus 2 dx. So just off onto the side here, if I let u equal x plus 3, then du dx is equal to 1. So I can replace dx with du. And this will become the integral of u to the minus 2 du. And the integral of u to the minus 2 du is going to be u to the minus 1 over minus 1. So that's increase the power and divide by the new power. And that minus is going to make us a plus out here. u to the minus 1, that's going to be 1 over x plus 3. And then we're going to have a plus c at the end. And so that's our result. So we've integrated something that looked fairly nasty to start off with by decomposing it into those sort of linear factor pieces, then coming through integrating by rules and here integrating by a, a little substitution over on the left. So that's another, another example. Now we've bumped it up to repeated linear factors for our partial fraction decomposition. There's just one more of these to go. We're going to look at what we can do 
when we have quadratic, effect, uh, quadratic factors appearing in the denominator and ones that we can't actually split any further because they have complex valued roots. So as usual check out uh, any other textbooks you like on integration by partial fractions and have a go at some exercises on this stuff.